This is the sixth video on acid reflux and we'll discuss management after endoscopy. How will findings at endoscopy support the doctor in the management of acid reflux? This will very much depend on the findings. PPIs are proton pump inhibitors and are the main drugs used to treat acid reflux. I have discussed PPIs in the earlier videos. So if the endoscopy is normal, then the patient has NERD. So medications, namely PPIs, are given for 4 to 8 weeks and stopped. Most patients improve and become pain-free. If symptoms reappear, medications can be given on a demand basis for a few days. On a demand basis means that a patient takes the PPI only when they have symptoms. On demand basis, PPIs are taken for a few days until the symptoms disappear and then the PPI is stopped. Sometimes, if the patient does not respond to the medication, the doctor might have to do further tests to rule out some other cause for the symptoms. Functional heartburn, which I will discuss later, is a common diagnosis in patients with a normal endoscopy. If the patient has erosions or ulcers, then the patient has what's called reflux esophagitis. Medication, namely PPIs, are given for 8 weeks or longer depending on severity of the reflux esophagitis and patient response. Barrett's esophagus, medication, namely PPIs, are given for many years or even lifelong. This is to prevent the Barrett's from getting worse and transforming into cancer. Also, Regular endoscopy at yearly intervals or longer are recommended in patients with Barrett's. This is to make sure that the Barrett doesn't get worse and also to pick up early signs of cancer. Narrowing or stricture of the eusophagus. Medication is usually given for many years or even lifelong to prevent further damage to the eusophagus. These medications are PPIs. Sometimes the narrowing in the eusophagus is so tight that the food or liquids have difficulty in going through. The doctor might arrange for a procedure to enlarge or dilate the narrowing in the eusophagus so that food and liquid can go through. This flowchart is a brief description of the management of Barrett's eusophagus. During endoscopy, multiple biopsies are taken at 1 to 2 cm intervals to detect any tissue with dysplasia in Barrett's eusophagus. Dysplasia are abnormal precancerous cells. If there is no dysplasia, the recommendation is to repeat endoscopy every 3 to 5 years, although some doctors are extra cautious and repeat it every year. The risk of developing eusophageal cancer if there is no dysplasia is estimated had been around 0.3% per year. If there is low-grade dysplasia, the risk of developing cancer is around 0.5 to 1% per year. The recommendation is the use of an endoscopic technique called radiofrequency ablation or RFA to destroy the dysplastic cells. If there is high-grade dysplasia, the risk of cancer is very high and 4 to 10 percent per year. This figure varies according to different studies. An endoscopic technique which strips off the dysplastic lining called endoscopic mucosal resection is carried out. It is often combined with RFA. The objective is to remove all the dysplastic tissue. If a patient does not respond to medication, and has a normal eusophagus on endoscopy, the doctor might order what is called a ambulatory acid probe test to identify when and for how long stomach acid backs up into the eusophagus. This slide shows an image of a patient undergoing the test. 
This test measures the 24-hour acid level in the lower esophagus. For example, in a patient with NERD or non-erosive reflux disease who does not respond to proton pump inhibitors or PPIs, if this test is done, it will measure the 24-hour pH in the lower esophagus. More than half of patients with an initial diagnosis of NERD or non-erosive reflux disease will have no evidence of acid reflux during the test. A patient with non-erosive reflux disease is expected to have acid refluxing into the lower esophagus. So if the patient does not have any evidence of acid reflux during the test, then this patient does not have nerve but has another condition. Most likely, what the patient has is a condition called functional heartburn. These patients have a normal esophagus on endoscopy and also do not respond to the standard acid reflux medications like PPIs. The ambulatory acid probe test shows that there is no acid reflux, yet the patients complain of symptoms similar to reflux. It is not clear what causes functional heartburn. Often, these patients have underlying stress, anxiety and depression and may respond to antidepressant medications. So, in summary, it is estimated that about half of patients who are initially diagnosed to have non-erosive reflux disease but do not respond to medication like PPIs do not have acid reflux, rather they have this condition called functional heartburn. Let's now talk about surgery. Is there a role for surgery in acid reflux? Surgery is rarely needed for acid reflux. It is reserved for patients who do not respond to medications. This slide shows one type of surgery for acid reflux called Nissen fundoplication surgery, where the lower esophagus is tightened by a sleeve of muscle, as shown in the slide. This leaf of muscle will tighten the esophageal sphincter. There are also newer endoscopic techniques to tighten the esophageal sphincter. Mm -hmm.